The hardcore match pitting Cactus Jack against Randy Orton at Backlash 2004, in my opinion, is one of the greatest hardcore matches the WWE have ever produced, if not the greatest. Whereas many other WWE hardcore matches were thrown together without much story or any kind of deep meaning other than two guys using weapons to beat each other up, Foley and Orton had established a rivalry months and months before they stepped into the ring at Backlash, and what's more, the match they ended up having was extremely gripping from start to end. I honestly rank it up there as one of Foley's greatest ever matches, and one of Randy Orton's greatest matches also. Today's video will look at the entire build up to Foley vs Orton at Backlash, along with an in depth look at the match itself. The Mick Foley vs Randy Orton rivalry started all the way back in June of 2003, around 10 months before the Backlash match even took place. WWE Raw was held in Madison Square Garden on the 23rd of June 2003, and Mick Foley was going to get recognised for his work in the company. Stone Cold Steve Austin, ECW Originals and even Vince McMahon himself were on hand to present Foley with an encased hardcore championship belt. It's a great segment here, Mick Foley gets in his cheap pops and Vince McMahon goes from evil boss to appreciative friend during the course of his speech. There's jabs taken at Al Snow, there's a lot here and it's definitely worth checking this one out as I'm sure many people have forgotten about it. When Raw went to commercial break, Foley was seen autographing his new book to Vince McMahon, and that's when Evolution's Ric Flair and Randy Orton walked by, two guys who had just lost a tag team match. When Foley tries to compliment Flair and Orton, the two men attack the hardcore legend, eventually leading to Mick Foley getting kicked down a flight of stairs and Vince McMahon quickly turning back to an evil boss in a matter of seconds. This also happened just before Randy truly began his legend killer run, so you could say that Mick Foley was the first legend who fell victim to Randy Orton. In Mick's book, The Hardcore Diaries, Foley said he split his head open during this segment and he ended up getting 5 stitches, but because of the camera angle it was never picked up on TV, and Mick felt that a lot of the impact from the segment was lost due to the lack of visible blood. Just for the sake of clarity, the next bit of information here, and indeed a lot of the information from this video, was all gathered through Mick Foley's books, in particular the Hardcore Diaries. Foley had watched Randy Orton on TV after the Madison Square Garden show and Mick took a real liking to Randy's in-ring work and his persona. The legend killer gimmick was now beginning to blossom and Foley felt he could do a lot more with Randy Orton. Mick picked up the phone and he pitched an idea to Vince McMahon. Mick Foley wanted to be the first pro wrestler to ever chicken out of a match. Foley wanted to accept a match with Randy Orton and then just walk away from it once the bell had rung. Orton would then launch a series of kind of political attack videos against Foley, where Foley's claims of being a hardcore legend would get questioned and scrutinised. Vince loved the idea, but others in the company didn't see the value in Mick Foley walking away from a fight. Mick wrote, a couple of nights before the Tampa show, I received a phone call from Stephanie McMahon telling me that a variety of well-respected wrestling minds had voiced opposition to my idea, feeling that, quite simply, any character who walked out on a match would never be forgiven by our fans. Instead, Steph told me I was going to walk out for the match and be jumped by Orton's brothers in Evolution, Triple H, Ric Flair and Batista. So it seems that our fans can indeed accept gullible, naive, stupid wrestlers, just not courageously uncertain ones. A phone call to Vince McMahon helped to smooth things over. Foley argued that the fans who would be displeased with the match not taking place on Raw weren't the same fans who were ordering pay-per-views, and this was the end goal after all, to have Foley vs Orton take place on a much bigger platform. Vince eventually agreed, stating that Mick Foley was the only person who could make this work. 
And so, on December 15th, 2003, Mick Foley would return to WWE Raw for just one more match against Randy Orton, and the WWE built this main event up throughout the entire broadcast. A few stipulations were added too. Randy Orton's IC title would be on the line. If Mick Foley won, General Manager Eric Bischoff would have to leave Raw. But if Randy Orton won, Mick Foley wouldn't be allowed to return to WWE in any kind of capacity. Just before the bell rings, Foley goes to the outside and he looks like he's psyching himself up for the bout. Randy Orton looks on as Foley is seemingly getting ready to launch an attack. Mick stands at the bottom of the entranceway and it looks like he's about to charge into the ring, but that doesn't happen. Foley instead turns away and he leaves Randy Orton standing there confused. You'd think Foley was about to reappear with a barbed wire 2x4 or something along those lines, but no. Mick goes to his makeshift co-GM room, he grabs his bag and he leaves. Orton catches up with Foley and Randy berates Mick for crying, telling Mick that legends don't cry before spitting in Foley's face. Mick walks past Randy and Raw comes to an end. And if Stephanie McMahon or anyone else had concerns about how Raw would end without an advertised match taking place, then they needn't worry. Mick Foley pulled this one off extremely well and you couldn't help but feel sympathy for Mrs Foley's baby boy. Mick was gone, he wasn't the stand-in co-GM anymore and he wasn't allowed to come back, seeing as he pretty much forfeited this match with Randy Orton. Two weeks later on Raw, Mick Foley's music played in the arena but Randy Orton walked out and Orton would continue to berate the hardcore legend, saying that Foley realised that stepping into the ring with Randy Orton would have been the biggest mistake of his life. Orton demanded that the official match ruling take place and Lillian Garcia was forced to announce that Randy Orton was still the Intercontinental Champion and Randy Orton was the new hardcore legend. In the weeks that followed, those political attack videos that Foley pitched to Vince McMahon began playing on Raw. And on the January 12th episode, Randy had a great night when he not only defended the IC title in a great match against Rob Van Dam, but he also seemingly proved that Foley was afraid of him when Mick didn't take up the Legend Killer's offer of a front row seat live at Raw. The following week, Stone Cold Steve Austin, the sheriff of WWE Raw, cut a promo on Mick Foley where Austin said he couldn't believe what Foley was allowing Randy to get away with these past few weeks and this sure wasn't the same Mick Foley that Steve Austin had known for all these years. Austin ordered Foley to appear at the Royal Rumble in 6 days time and if Foley doesn't show up then Mick was breaking Stone Cold's law and that was something you just didn't do. If Foley didn't show up at the Royal Rumble then Austin would show up at Foley's house and he'd drag him to the pay per view. Randy Orton entered the 2004 Royal Rumble match at number 2 and he had a great run in this bout. That was until Mick Foley showed up as the 21st entrant and Foley eliminated both himself and Orton from the Rumble match. The two men brawled on the outside following the eliminations. Mick Foley took some serious chair shots to the head and Foley also took a nasty bump on the entrance way. But one thing was definitely for sure, Mick Foley wasn't afraid of Randy Orton. The next night on Raw, Mick explained himself. Foley said that the main attribute he had during his entire wrestling career was his ability to channel his hatred onto his opponents, allowing Foley to do things that were seemingly impossible. When Foley retired, he let go of all that hatred and he became happy with himself because he didn't want to be a bitter old timer who was still trying to do things that his body or mind simply wouldn't allow him to do. And on December 15th when Foley walked out on the match, Mick says the mistake he made wasn't walking out of the bout, but the mistake was accepting the bout in the first place. Foley realised he couldn't channel any hatred when he walked down to the ring to face Orton, 
But Orton maybe seized an opportunity here and Orton maybe took advantage of how Mick Foley was feeling at the time. Foley calls Orton out and Foley wants Randy to spit in his face once again. It's a strange request and Orton doesn't seem to want to do it but Mick aggravates the legend killer by slapping him in the face. Mick then wanted Orton to spit on the other side of his face. Orton does it, we get a few close ups that we really didn't need to see but Foley then changes the mood by saying his kids have done way worse to him during the course of their upbringing. Foley tells Randy though that the thought of Orton being called a hardcore legend is a joke and while the physical act of spitting on Foley's face means little to Mick, spitting on Mick's legacy and indeed the whole wrestling business is something that Foley takes very personally. Foley then begins punching himself in the face. Mick says that he's worked too hard to have his reputation tarnished by Randy Orton. Mick is prepared to welcome the hatred back in order to destroy Orton. And Foley then snaps and Orton takes a beating. Ric Flair and Batista come down but Foley evens the odds with a steel chair as the broadcast comes to an end. One thing Evolution always maintained throughout their run was the numbers advantage. You mess with one Evolution member and you mess with them all. And Mick Foley realised this in the weeks that followed his genuinely entertaining outburst against Randy Orton. Orton vs Foley was teased for Wrestlemania 20, but Orton would say that it's unfair that an upcoming superstar like the legend killer would have to wrestle a has-been like Mick Foley on the WWE's grandest stage of all. Whenever Foley would try to prove himself by going up against Orton, he would get attacked by Flair and Batista also. Foley simply couldn't overcome evolution on his own, and so an old friend would return to the WWE to help out Mick. On the March 1st episode of Monday Night Raw, The Rock made a surprise appearance to stand beside Mick Foley, and The Rock and Sock connection were able to take out Evolution as the crowd went totally nuts. The Rock and Mick Foley would get booked into a match against Orton, Flair and Batista at WrestleMania 20, and although fans had a great time seeing Foley and Rock back together on TV, something just didn't seem quite right with Mick Foley on the day of WrestleMania. You can see that Foley looks a little nervous as The Rock cuts a promo at WrestleMania 20, and he just doesn't seem to be with it at all during the matchup. Foley simply put a lot of pressure on himself to deliver at this milestone WrestleMania event in Madison Square Garden, and he let those nerves get the better of him. You have to remember too that Mick hadn't worked a match in four years, not including the Royal Rumble 2004 appearance, and so there was a lot on Foley's mind here, and he let it get the better of him. Mick even said on Ric Flair's old podcast that Steve Austin told him to his face that he dropped the ball at WrestleMania 20. Personally, I still think it's a great match and it served its purpose, but Foley wanted more from this big event held in the garden. In the Hardcore Diaries, Foley wrote, Back to WrestleMania and my match that held so much promise, promise that unfortunately didn't quite materialise. We didn't exactly stink out the place, but we didn't tear it down either. We had a good match, but a good match was not what I was hoping for. Not after four years away. Not after so much build up, so much thought, so many hours spent visualising the great things to come. What was most disappointing to me was realising that I'd settled for good enough. I heard the evolution music and I specifically remembered hoping I didn't suck when I got out there. That was it, not exactly reaching for the stars, huh? It would be like Michael Jordan taking the last shot in game 7, hoping just to hit the rim. Evolution would win the bout and although Foley was feeling down about the match, he had another shot at redemption, Backlash 2004. Foley got Orton to accept the match by telling Randy that the only way he could call himself the hardcore legend is if Randy could beat Foley in the middle of the ring. The singles match between Mick Foley and Randy Orton would finally take place on pay per view, it was going to be for the Intercontinental Championship, Evolution was banned from ringside and it was going to be contested under hardcore rules. 
Mick Foley wasn't showing up at Backlash, but Cactus Jack was. And if you thought that Mick Foley had no chance of redeeming himself after his WrestleMania 20 performance, then you would have been so, so wrong. Cactus Jack was bringing his new friend Barbie with him, a baseball bat wrapped in barbed wire that promised to tear through Randy Orton's flesh, and Randy Orton looked very concerned about what could happen to him at the Backlash pay-per-view. The hype video before the match harkened back to Cactus Jack's days in ECW, and there was definitely an emphasis on sheer violence here, so expectations were kinda high as Randy Orton made his way into the arena on April 18th, 2004. Not only did Randy Orton have a chance to prove himself against the hardcore legend and make a name for himself here, but Mick Foley wanted to make up for WrestleMania 20. Both guys had a lot to gain from this bout. Foley goes straight for the kill with his baseball bat wrapped in barbed wire, and Orton uses a trash can to block the attack. Randy then gets out of the ring and our cameraman falls over before Cactus Jack takes a drop toe hold on the steel steps. It's an absolutely frantic start to the match here. The two men struggle as they try to push Barbie into each other's faces, but Foley hits Orton with a right hand to break it up. Orton follows up with three trash can shots, but Foley gets a foot up on the fourth, resulting in Orton getting a taste of his own medicine. The crowd chants for Foley as the match gets back in the ring. Foley stays in control with a few kicks to the head and a leg drop, and something you may notice here is that Foley was in absolutely incredible shape here for this bout. Even in comparison to WrestleMania just a month prior, Mick Foley looked really good here. A baseball slide sends Orton out of the ring and Mick hits a swinging neckbreaker on the outside. Randy just can't catch a break here as Cactus Jack brings the pain at Backlash. Orton tries to leave the match but Foley gives chase and this results in Mick taking a side suplex on the rampway and Orton also tries a backslide, it only gets him a two count. Randy slams the back of Jack's head on the ramp and Foley gets rammed into the steps and it looks like Randy is going to take the lead a little as the match gets back inside the ropes. Randy grabs the baseball bat wrapped in barbed wire and he tries to force it into Mick's face. Foley fights with everything he's got and he ends up delivering a low blow that puts Randy back on the mat. Cactus then asks the fans in attendance if they want to see Mr. Socko or Barbie. The crowd cheers for Barbie and so Randy Orton takes a shot right to the head that busts him open. Not one to show sympathy, Mick Foley drills the baseball bat into Orton's head one more time. And from this point on, things just start getting even more crazy. Cactus delivers some punches and forearms to the head before hitting Orton with a running knee strike. Randy then gets the baseball bat grinded into his face and when he escapes, he looks straight at the hard camera as if he was asking viewers at home to get him out of this mess, a mess that he created the previous year when he kicked Foley down those stairs. The baseball bat again gets grinded into Randy's face and then Foley places the bat between Orton's legs. Cactus Jack then hits a leg drop and this was a great little spot here. Cactus then gets out of the ring looking for something else to play with and he finds some gasoline and a lighter. Mick pours the gasoline all over the baseball bat, he goes to light it, but then Eric Bischoff shows up, saying that the fire department will shut down Backlash and the fans will get sent home if Mick sets his new favourite weapon on fire. This is enough to make Cactus reconsider, much to the dismay of fans in attendance. Foley instead picks up a baking tray and Randy Orton's body contorts after taking a shot to the head. And then Foley goes back outside and he finds a bed of barbed wire. The barbed wire has been placed on top of a wooden board and the crowd are now right back into the match. They have totally forgotten and forgiven Eric Bischoff. Randy manages to avoid taking the bump by throwing powder in Mick's eyes and then Foley takes a body slam right on the barbed wire. 
Randy has a smile on his face for the first time since this match began as he goes for a pin, but he only gets a two. Orton props the board up in the corner and he goes to Irish whip his opponent. Cactus tries to reverse it but it's no good. Mick Foley takes the barbed wire once again and this time it completely tears his arm up. Randy Orton drops the board on top of Foley as Jim Ross says he never imagined this matchup getting so extreme. Randy then produces a bag, he empties out its contents and thousands of thumbtacks hit the mat. Randy lines up an RKO on the thumbtacks, hoping to put an end to the match, but Mick Foley grabs Orton and Randy takes the bump back first. And the look on Randy's face tells the story here. Thumbtacks are stuck in Randy's back, his legs, his hands, his forearms, even his elbows. It's one of the best looking thumbtack bumps you'll ever see, and I think a lot of that is thanks to Randy's reaction afterwards. Randy gets rolled up for a pin and you can see the tacks are causing him some serious problems here. The legend killer kicks out and he goes back up the ramp to get some of those tacks pulled out. There's just way too many stuck into his body to continue the match. When Foley and Orton re-emerge from the backstage area, Randy gets thrown off the stage. And remember, there were still a lot of those tacks stuck in his back. Medics and officials run over to help Randy, and it looks like the match has been called off. Mick Foley goes to leave the arena, but he attacks the referees instead, resulting in Cactus Jack jumping off the stage to deliver a flying elbow. The camera angle here too was absolutely perfect. Somehow, Randy kicks out a two as the match continues. Cactus brings Orton back down to the ring and he hits the double arm DDT. Somehow, again, Randy Orton kicks out, but fans are just happy that this match is going to continue. Randy rolls out of the ring and he manages to hit Foley with the baseball bat. Randy delivers more shots inside the ring, but Foley answers with the mandible claw. Orton gets out by delivering a big forearm uppercut and a low blow. Foley sinks in the mandible claw once again, but Orton pulls out an RKO. Foley kicks out, but the second RKO on the baseball bat is enough to put Foley away. Randy Orton defeats Mick Foley at Backlash 2004 in one of the very best hardcore matches to ever air on a WWE show. Flair and Batista come out to assist Randy Orton back to the locker room and Jim Ross says that this could be a sign of things to come from the young Randy Orton. It's clear to see here that Mick Foley helped legitimize Randy Orton and Randy Orton certainly proved his toughness during this bout. The legend killer would continue to climb the ranks in world wrestling entertainment and he would win the world heavyweight title just a few months after this incredible performance at Backlash. As for Mick Foley, it was mission accomplished and Mick would disappear from WWE television once again, coming back to commentate on the 2005 ECW One Night Stand show and later in the year, Foley would take part in the WWE Taboo Tuesday pay-per-view. Foley's next big hardcore match took place at WrestleMania 22 when he wrestled Edge in another brutal yet entertaining showdown and that match will get covered in the future here on Wrestling Bios. Mick Foley wrote in his book, I really did care about the match and I think it showed, for Randy Orton and I had a classic hardcore battle that night. Wild, intense, bloody and very well interpreted by both parties. Randy still claims it was the best match of his career, which is a tremendous compliment considering some of the great ones he's been involved in over the last few years. It may have been my best match as well, but as is usually the case with these type of things, there was a hell of a price to pay for backlash. I had over 75 cuts on my body, mostly the arms and fingers, courtesy of a board laced with generous amounts of barbed wire. Hey, at least there weren't explosives in there, like in my old IWA King of the Death match days in Japan. My knee gave out a couple of days later, resulting in a July surgery. And as I pulled into a Tim Hortons donut shop, intent on celebrating my hard fought match with a glorious jelly filled delicacy, I was immediately reminded of the consequences of human skill meeting steel. Yeah, I puked in the parking lot but I still got that donut.